The following podcast is a TJ DeSantis production. Comments, questions, and inquiries can be sent to DeSantisProd at gmail.com. Are you talking shift? We are. It's time for the We're Talking Shift podcast. Now, now, now. Here to talk shift are your hosts, Lori Bischoff and Candace Parisi. We're talking shift. Hello, I'm Candace Parisi. Hi, I'm Lori Bischoff, and we're talking shift. So today, we're going to be talking about the impact of believing in someone else. Mm. You know what I believe in? I believe in macaroni and cheese. Ah. (laughs) I just had myself a nice big bowl of macaroni and cheese just a little while ago, and I feel so good about it. I don't know. I didn't see that one coming. Yeah. Yeah, I got to say. I I, I don't know why... um, why people uh, grow up and they stop eating macaroni and cheese. Mm. That's what I believe in. I believe that people should eat macaroni and cheese. You know, we, we did eat a lot of macaroni and cheese when our, yeah, when we were young and broke and, you know, kids. Broke. I mean, the best mac and cheese was Kraft. The the orange macaroni and cheese, right? It was Mm -hmm. like, I don't know, 79 cents for a box and you could feed your family. (laughs) And it was so delicious. Our favorite thing to do was to pour, um, hot sauce on it. Ah, oh, see, that's tainting. I knew that was going to ruin it for you. It. Well, yeah, we were all tainting. over it. And then if you really wanted to make a meal out of it, you added a can of tuna. Yeah. So you had like a suedo tuna casserole. Just ruined it. Well, yeah. Well, my thing with macaroni and cheese and probably every food is that I don't chew. I have a thing where I don't chew. And so I chew as little as possible, probably because I am lazy and I just want to eat it and get it done with. And so I don't chew and I just swallow the macaroni and cheese. It can't be good. It can't be good. It can't, can't, be, good. can't be good. I remember when my <laughs> when I was a little kid, my dad he um, he tells this story once a month, so I remember it. Uh, <laughs> I was sick. I had the flu for like three three days, and I didn't eat anything, and I just was really feeling sick. And he was like, all right, you ready to eat? And I'm like, I don't know. And he's like, well, let me make you a big bowl of macaroni and cheese. And I'm like, well, fuck yes, I want to eat. <laughs> yeah. And so <laughs> he made this bowl of macaroni and cheese, and I just killed it, just knocked it out, just ate the whole thing. Without chewing? Uh, no, well, calm seriously? down, calm okay. down. Don't, don't mean, screw with my story okay. here. Oh, and so, <laughs> so, so, delete, delete. <laughs> and so I eat all my macaroni and cheese, and I'm just very happy. And, but I'm still sick. So I go in the bathroom and before I can get to the place where you're supposed to throw up, I threw up all over the floor and so he came in, he came in and he just like looked down at the macaroni and cheese all over the floor. And he was like, you did not chew one time. God. You look at, look at the floor. We could put this back in a bowl and you could just eat it again. You're disgusting. You need to chew your food. And I went to bed. I had a flu and, and he cleaned up all the macaroni and cheese, but he will tell that fucking story to Everybody. anybody who listens. Wow. He'll be like, hi, this is my, this is my daughter, Candace. Mm. Let me tell you about, uh, this time when she, she did, she threw up all over the floor and the macaroni and cheese story. And so I just look wow. for it every time I'm around him. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And so I believe that macaroni and cheese is very good for you. I need to learn how to chew. You're a big chewer. I watch you. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> a big chewer? Yeah, yeah. You're super into chewing. It's important to chew your food. That's why you have <sighs> teeth. Doesn't your doesn't your jaw get tired after? I mean, I watch you. Like no, eat a I mean, salad. I'm, it's not I don't like want to be creepy, but I watch. Hay. No, my jaw doesn't get sore. I'm gonna get locked jaw from but chewing all that your, lettuce. Your jaw, your chew muscles are just weak because you haven't used them in your entire <laughs> life. Maybe that's the problem serious so i'm while you're while you're gonna be visiting with me i'm going to feed you carrots that sounds terrible yeah because you're gonna have to chew them i don't know the heimlich maneuver that yeah. well yeah. so you're gonna have to chew all right i'm just saying it's important <laughs> it's very important <laughs> so, yeah and then so. i have uh, i have words for everything and i always add macaroni and like with macaroni and cheese this is how much I love macaroni and cheese just to end this up I <laughs> I will name things something aroni and cheese oh. like I'll name people like my cat is doc aroni and cheese <laughs> <laughs> well, so what what what's his name without doc. the Ron- it's oh, doc. doc okay his name is doc okay 
but Dockeroni and cheese. Just uh, I'll be like, hey, Dockeroni and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> or um, everything could be a snack or you know, snackaroni and cheese, Lorioroni and cheese. Oh. I just feel like it makes everything better. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Nikki Aroni and cheese. Yeah. That's something just sounds it just doesn't sound as good when I say Eric Aroni and cheese. It's wow. Like, I like it. Okay, I'll play You're with welcome. it. I'll play with it. You're welcome. I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna give it a chance. <laughs> okay. So Let's uh, <laughs> let's dive right in then, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll nap. My, my brain is scrambled and all I can think of now is, is macaroni and cheese. You're welcome. Um, so there, this is going to be just one of those um, cut to Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you he ate so much macaroni and cheese. Uh, you know, I don't, did they, I, probably, probably. Yeah. Maybe. Aversion. But, all right. So, so talking about, talking about believing though in someone else, yeah. uh, something other than macaroni and cheese. Mm-hmm. I mean, here's, um, I was watching something, uh, about a week ago and I, I didn't, uh, I didn't realize this, that when Einstein, you know, arguably one of the greatest minds of our time, one of, uh, I didn't know that when he was a child, um, they, uh, basically were sending him home from school saying he's addle brained and we can't help him. Hmm. Like basically you're stupid. That's and, crazy. Right. I wonder how many times we do that now. Yeah. Yeah. And his mom though told him that, um, he was a genius and that in the school wasn't, um, skilled enough to help him because he was so brilliant. Hmm. So she was going to teach him basically homeschool him. Mm -hmm. And so the seed was planted in his head because she believed in him. She planted the seed that he was a genius. So he never knew his, his conscience consciousness was not rewired to believe that he was an idiot. It was, it was wired basically to believe because of what his mother told him Yeah, that he was a genius. How amazing is that? What a great mom. And the rest is history, right? Yeah. So thank you. Einstein's mom. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Moms, moms, moms rule. So hashtag moms. (laughs) Thanks. Thank you. Einstein's mom. How incredible is that? Like he, like teachers were like, no, he's so stupid. And then his mom's like, nope, I'm going to pull you out of that. And I'm going to tell you you're a genius every day. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to help you be who you actually are and believe in you. And it just took that much for that man to be Mm -hmm. freaking great. I just think that that's amazing. And so it's so um, it's crazy to think about how something when you're small and most of us have had seeds planted you know, in our, in our minds when we were young that we don't even realize have completely affected the entire way we've been moving through life. Mm. And it could have been something that was true. It could have been something that was completely false, Mm -hmm. completely a lie. Even maybe it was well-intentioned, but just simply wrong. And then we have moved according to that belief Right. And then, and here you are. And there's, you know, so, and it works both ways. Like Einstein, she made it work for him. But then there's the opposite where you're told, you know, it had he, had she said, oh, the school said, you know, you're not smart enough to be here. Maybe he would have never become the genius, fulfilled his potential. Right. That's a lot of pressure. That's a lot of pressure on other people, you know, especially moms. Like you could screw up a kid like easy. All you got to do is just say something and it's stuck in them, their subconscious. And then they're 40 years old thinking that they are stupid or they are this or they are that. And we get stuck. We get stuck in the ideas that other people have about us, but it works, you know, both ways. If we can use our voices to uplift people and remind people who they are, like that's the, that's the good shit. Yeah. And I, and, and so many people, you know, it happens in, in, again, in school, all the those parents, it's the people that are influencing you. I mean, you know, when you're a kid, you're just, um, you're a sponge, you're like a lump of clay and you're being molded by all of the, um, influences in your life, which is your environment and the people that are supposed to be teaching you. Right. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. uh, and it, and it happens, um, you know, even well into adolescence. And it, I remember once, uh, Gosh, it was, uh, I want to say 
maybe like high school, like 10th grade or something. Mm -hmm. And I remember, uh, and I, I had already been working. I had a great job. I was making good money and I was horrible in school. Mm. I was a delinquent. I was late every day on the days I did show up. Mm-hmm. I would leave early. I would skip classes. I was, was not a school person. And I remember, uh, my gym teacher, <laughs> my gym teacher looked at me and I hated gym too. I didn't like it. I don't want to be there. I don't want to be doing all these stupid things with all you people that I don't care about. I just was not my cup of tea. Didn't want to wear the funny outfit. Yeah, none of it. It was none of it seemed like it was anything that had to do with my life. Mm-hmm. But being late though every day, Mrs. Jacobson, my gym teacher, sees me in the hallway coming in late again, and she says, "Lori, you're never going to be able to hold a job." Oh Jesus! <laughs> you're never going to be able to work and hold a job because you mm-hmm. can't show up on time. And I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> well, I've been working like since I was five, so yeah, you know. Yeah. Whatever. But, and I'm probably making more money than you actually, Mrs. J, but I'm not going to say that yeah. because you, it was maybe an unintended way to motivate me, sure. like to say, yeah. if you, you have to show up on time so you can be responsible enough to, to have a job and, you know. And, yeah. But and, what you wanted to say to Mrs. Jenkins is, yeah. hey, go fuck yourself. Right. I've been working since I was five years old. Yeah. Now right. you go climb the rope. Right, right. Miss Jenkins. So, <laughs> right. Which she was not capable of doing. No. Because, yeah. So, <laughs> again, but I was already, but but had I not already had the experience uh, of knowing that I was responsible and knowing that I could show up on time and knowing that I could do those things, I could have been influenced to think, wow, I'm just a lazy good for nothing and let that seed be planted in my brain yeah, and then gone on to fulfill. What is that uh, phrase? You know, the, uh, uh, oh, you know what I'm thinking of? That yeah. Fulfilling pro- the pro- prophecy. <laughs> prophecy, erroneous cheese. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's <laughs> thank you. <laughs> nice thing. You're nice welcome. Thing. Self-fulfilling prophecy. Oh, God, Erroni and cheese. Yeah. It's and cheese. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, didn't you just watch a movie about something like this? Yeah. Yeah. And then actually it was uh, several months back. Um, we were watching this movie called Florence Foster Jenkins with Hugh Grant and Meryl Streep. I've never seen that movie. I had never heard of this one based on a true story of, of Florence. And, uh, it, you know what? It was really interesting and it, and it kind of is, I mean, it has something to do with this because it is, goes back to believing in someone else, um, and supporting them. Mm-hmm. All right. So Florence was like a, um, she was a wealthy, um, I guess you could say kind of a socialite in, um, New York, I don't remember what they, you know, back in like decades and decades ago. I don't know. Maybe it was like the the 30s or 40s. I can't remember. But the point is Florence, her dream was to be uh, an opera singer and sing on the stage and perform. Mm. And her voice sucked. Oh, jeez. She couldn't, she couldn't hold a note. Couldn't. She was terrible. Sounds she like was, me. Sounds like me. <laughs> Go ahead. This is a story about she, myself. <laughs> she was horrible, but uh, she didn't, but that, what, that was her dream. And she was going to do anything that she could do to make that happen. So her husband, Hugh Grant, um, who's her second husband. Um, he, it, he loves her and it, all he's going to do is support her. So, you know, they hire the best vocal coach and they have performances where he, you know, they buy the, out the opera house and they literally pad the audience. They pay, he pays all their friends and everybody he knows to come in and be the audience mm. and, um, and cheer her on and applaud her and make her feel like she's amazing. Oh, wow. That's love right there. Right. Mm. I mean, it's um, to the point where then there was uh, he would pay the newspapers to do, um, you know, good reviews. And there it came to a point it's, uh, where at some point uh, where there was a, uh, a reviewer that was going to be like, mm, you can't buy me. She's horrible and I'm going to write about it. And uh, Hugh Grant goes out early in the morning when the new papers hit and he like buys all the papers he could find in the city and mm-hmm. throws them all away. One finally makes its way to her, though, mm. but um, it doesn't seem to phase her. But here's the thing. Here's the big question, or as the story goes. F- Florence was going to, uh, she was not going to live a long life because she had um, syphilis from her first husband. I see. 
and her dream was just to sing. And so the movie is basically ending something like, you never know if she really believes that she's a good singer or, or if she actually thinks she, you don't know what she really thinks. Mm. If she really believes it or if she knows she sucks and she doesn't care. So on her deathbed, she says to him something like, well, they may have said, so you know that she probably saw the article. They may have said that I couldn't sing, but they'll never be able to say that I didn't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I just thought, wow, that was really, to me, that was so fascinating. And it's just another one of those examples of this woman got to live her dream, even though she was horrible and people were laughing at her behind her back. She didn't care. Wow. She might have known. She might not have. I don't know. I don't know. But she did it anyway. And this man jumped through hoops and uh, did everything he could possibly do to protect her and make sure that she could live her dream. That's the kind of people you want in your life. Mm -hmm. If people aren't doing that for you, that's the kind of friendships and relationships you want. Shit. Mm -hmm. You want somebody who sees what you want for your own self, regardless if you're good at it or not, and cheers you on. Exactly. Pushes you forward. And because maybe you do suck at stuff. But th- that doesn't matter. It's, uh, you know, yeah. kids suck at all sorts of stuff, but they do stuff anyway. They they run and jump and mm-hmm. pretend they're Superman. They're not Superman, but it's in encouraging people to be their authentic self in the moment. How awesome is that? What a great movie. I'm going to have to check it out now. Yeah, yeah. It's it's interesting because it's different and it's uh, it's very intriguing. So, uh, yeah, I would say check it out. Um, it, it's... Uh, I mean, have you had an experience like that in your life where somebody told you something uh, that was influential that really like you feel now had had a positive impact on you? hundred percent. hundred percent. Yeah. I wanted to be a singer when I was little and uh, I I wanted uh, I wanted that more than anything. That's all I wanted to be when I was a kid. And my voice was terrible, (laughs) terrible and still is. And my mom cheered me on. She was like, sing for me. And I was like, okie dokie, here you go. <laughs> and then I'd be done. And she's like, that's amazing. My mom was my cheerleader for sure on everything. She, she set me up for success. She, even today, every single day, I'm telling you right now, every single day of my life, she told me to my face or has called me on the phone or has left a message on my answering machine saying, Candace. You're the master. She always says I'm the master. You're the master. You can do anything you want. You're so brilliant. Like she just says it. And as like when I was a teenager, I was like, can you shut up? <laughs> like stop it. But like, it, it, but as a, a child that shaped me, like I was like, really? I can do anything I want? Mm. Anything? And so I was open to everything. I was trying I never thought that I couldn't be or do anything and then as an adult she still does that shit she'll be like uh, uh, answer I have a message on my answer machine right now from this morning Mm -hmm. Candice Candy she calls me Candy nobody else is allowed to Candy okay that answers my question I don't have now (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. Candy um you're the master you're doing so great Sometimes she'll sing it, which is weird. Like, she's a great cheerleader. I think that that, is, that shapes a lot of how a person is in their own life. I, I think that you can move through life in a whole new way, like as if everything is an open door. Mm-hmm. But if somebody is like, hey, you're stupid or says no to you all the time or tells you to stop or, mm-hmm. you know, says something like you're a gym teacher. So- right. Yeah. You know, you got to be careful with your words. You do. You, you do. Because you, you just don't, you know, think about, wow, that could be a seed that I have just planted in that young person or mm. that impressionable person's mm-hmm. brain mm-hmm. that could influence the way they live their whole life. It happens all day, every day. Yeah. And, and so, you know, to to understand that you have the ability with, with a word or a phrase or some just, you know, a look acknowledgement Mm -hmm. to make an impact on somebody that they will never forget. There's so much power there and it's so misused. Oh yeah. So misused. Uh, But 
but it also, you know, for people that get that, it's it's used so beautifully. I, I remember, and this is just like a little thing, but I still remember it. It mm-hmm. was a big thing to me at the time. Um, but I remember it was actually when I first started dating my husband, mm. and I was um, I was looking for a new job, and he was looking through the want ads with me. We had you know newspapers and want ads back in the old days, and. Uh, <laughs> And I was skimming through and he, he sees this job at a, uh, at a country club, mm-hmm. a big swanky country club. And, uh, it was, uh, looking for, um, they were looking to hire a manager for their dining room, one of their dining rooms. They had a several and he's like, here's one. Why don't you apply for that? I'm like, well, I, I, first of all, I would never, I didn't see it because if I did see it, I would have skimmed right over it because mm-hmm. in my mind, I'm like, well, I don't, I don't, I, I'm not qualified to do that. Right. I don't know anything about that. I've never done that. Uh, I've been, you know, I've been a waitress. I haven't managed. And he's like, just apply. What's the worst that can happen? My mind is like, they could say yes. And I'd be like, <laughs> now what do I do? But I was like, nah. but he, he encouraged me mm-hmm. he's like, just, just see what happens. Just go. You never know. The worst that can happen is you don't get hired. Can you live with that? Why don't he, I would have never even read it, given it a moment's thought, but he was like, he believed that at least I should try. Right. And I was, that was new for me. Mm -hmm. And I, and I was like, okay. So I applied for the job Mm -hmm. at this big swanky country club and, you know, which was something I had, I had never stepped, I never, I didn't even know it existed. I, I didn't live in that kind of lifestyle. Right. Um, and so I, I found my way over there and I was very nervous and intimidated. I applied and I got the job. What? I applied and I got the job. Mm. And for, you know, however long I was there, I became, I then became a manager of this dining room and I just, I learned it and I did a great, and I did a great job. Awesome. But that one, you know, that one little thing I would have never, had I not had somebody that believed enough in me to go, you know what, go, I, I think you should go. Mm. And it was so meaningful. So meaningful. The great so, husband. He's a good, he's a good guy. He's a good dude. I got yeah, me, I got, I got me. A How much does a manager back in the day make? How much were you making? Oh. How much were you pulling in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, I was probably making at least seven dollars an hour. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't. I don't remember. This would have been like nineteen eighty one. I couldn't even fathom a guess. I don't even know. Great. I don't know. But nineteen eighty one. You know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. A ton. You were making a ton of money. Yeah, let's just go with that. A ton, a ton of roni. A ton of roni and cheese. <laughs> so so yeah we um we want to make sure that we are just cognizant of the power that we have to set somebody up for you know really seeing what they're made of and rising to their potential totally that's the kind of people that you want in your life if if you've got people who are ripping you down in your life just run for your life Run for your life. I don't have anybody in my life that uh, that rips me apart or doesn't. I just this is not. Uh, I'm I'm lazy to it. I just can't have it in my life. It's it's the uh, amazing relationships are none. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and the expectation for the people that are in my life is that I'm going to be that for them as well. I'm going to lift them up. Like what other reason to have friendships and have relationships is there than to love each other with your words? Yeah. 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 To, you know, have enough love and, and respect to, for other people or, and for those people in your life to be truly, I want the best for you. How can I help raise you up? Mm-hmm. If everyone did that, even just a little, wow, it'd be huge. It would be huge. It'd be huge, right? Huge. Huge. Okay. <laughs> Enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> we get too much, too much. Back it up, back it up. So <laughs> huge okay. aroni and cheese. Huge, love it. We're, you know what we're having for dinner tonight, right? I fucking hope so. Yeah. I'm I'm giving you subliminal hints I, right now. That's your idea of subliminal. <laughs> wow. I, I whispered it in I your in your obvious. ear. I Thanks whispered it in your ear when you were sleeping. Macaroni and cheese. Okay. <laughs> Holy yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Craft. Oh, 
like Kraft, 100%. Yeah, that homemade no stuff. tuna, no spicy the stuff. Orange Kraft out yeah. of the box right. with all the uh, artificial stuff. Yes, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right. So, uh, so we have a new segment. Yes, we do. Yes, yeah. the Shift Doctors. Right. Uh, we are officially uh, Doctors of Shift. <laughs> We have been appointed this uh, honor yeah. to be that. Yeah. And so, uh, so we have a question. Yeah, we us. have a question that came in, and it is from Beth from Connecticut. All right, Beth from Connecticut. She says, my sister wants to move in with me. I really don't want her to because I want my own space. I've done a lot of work on myself, and I'm in a really good place, a good positive place right now, and I'm enjoying my alone time so much. It's the first time in my life I've lived by myself. My sister, I love her, but she's such a negative Nancy and creates drama all the time. How do I tell her no without hurting her feelings? Ooh, that's a hard one. Mm -hmm. I always switch it around. That's a good one. I always switch it up. So if I was going to be moving in with, let's say, you. And you really like felt like, ooh, I don't want you to. Mm -hmm. If you didn't, if you didn't tell me no, then I would just be moving in. But you don't really want me there. Right. Like, assume that the other person has emotional intelligence enough to take a no, mm -hmm. and assume that if you do tell them no, that they're going to move on to something else that makes them happier, that wants them there. Yeah. 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 What do you think? Yeah, I I think. I think you're right. I think that it's, you do, you have to, gosh, you got to be honest. You have to be honest, especially if you're, you know, I mean, there's circumstances, but if she's in this place, which it sounds like she's been working to get to this place mm -hmm. and now she's finally, um, she's finally gotten to a spot where she's really taking off. Mm -hmm. She's, she's happy and she's at peace and she's been doing her work. And so Beth, you, um, you know, you owe it to your sister, I think, mm. to show her what's possible by demonstrating, you know, what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I am going to stand on my own two feet. I'm going to be alone. I'm going to do my work and, and I'm going to put, um, I'm going to put myself first because I need to get from where I was to where I'm trying to go. And I love you. You know, I, you know, always tell you, you can tell she said, I love her. Mm -hmm. you know? So you always make sure, you know, it's not, it's not that I don't love you and it's not that I don't want the best for you, but I would be willing to help you find a place that you feel comfortable in. But I, I need this for me. And I know you'll understand because I know you love me as well and you want me to be happy too. Yeah. Yeah. Hard things. I like to put it in what's called a sandwich managers yes. actually. Yeah, I call uh, it bookends. yeah. 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 Uh, in the management field, <laughs> they call it a sandwich. Okay. And so <laughs> what you do is you say something positive yeah. in between, you know, uh, on both sides of the negative. Right. And so you're like, sister, I love you so much. Mm -hmm. You're so amazing. You're not moving in with me. Mm hmm. And I love your shoes you're wearing today. <laughs> <laughs> you have such good taste. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's figuring out how to sandwich something hard to say in between two, right. you know, compliments. Yeah, exactly. And a person can take it a lot easier if you're complimenting them more than you're telling them no. Right. So the first compliment and yeah, the first, <laughs> the first one is yes, yeah, something that makes the, cause it puts them at ease yeah. and it takes them off defense. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, you kind of neutral, neutral. Like, I love you sister. Yeah. And I'm flattered I'm, that you want to yeah. live with me. You yeah. Know? But you're not gonna, but it's not going to happen. Ugh, it it's can't. Not. Yeah. And then you can, you know, fill that in with however you need to fill it in. Great shoes. And then, yeah. Let's go have lunch. Let's go have lunch. And sh go shoe shopping. Yeah, let's go and shoe then shopping. We'll, you know, and find we'll part ways. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Over on that side of town. Yeah, see so yeah. Right. Right. Yep. So. It's hard to do when it's your family, but it's uh, it's always the best case scenario to just tell the truth. It, it, yeah. Yeah. And you don't, I mean, the tr people always assume that, um, they assume that whoever is going to be the recipient of that truth is automatically going to be crushed and emotionally destroyed. Yeah. And I think sometimes because we care and we don't want to hurt the ones we love, you know, so sometimes we assume that they're, um, 
they're not as strong as they are. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we think that it's going to be a lot harder on them and they're like, no, that stung a little, but uh, okay, I'll, I'll be all right. Yeah. And then you respect the person more because they told you the truth. And you're setting a good example for sister. Hello. Hello, sister. Mm -hmm. Yep. Negative yeah. Nancy. So Beth, uh, <laughs> from Connecticut, we, uh, hope that that helps you out and, uh, let us know. Let Sandwich. Us know how it goes. Yeah. Sandwiches. Sandwiches. Bookends. Yeah. Bookends. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. I think, uh, I think I'm ready for some macaroni, macaroni and cheese. cheese. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> all right, you guys, you know where to find us. Give us a rating on iTunes if you will. We would love some stars and we'd love to hear your comments. And uh, go to Patreon, patreon.com forward slash talk and shift and go check out the give a buck movement. You are not going to want to be on the outside of that movement looking in. You want to be a part of it. And that's what's going to make it powerful. Yes. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Very powerful. So be part of the powerful movement. It's crazy how the thought that you could give one dollar and like mm -hmm. a whole bunch of people do that, and then it means something mm -hmm. in such a huge way, but it's something that you would never think about. You know, it's mm -hmm. just, yeah. yeah, yeah, nickels. Yeah, yeah. Like twenty nickels a month. Twenty nickels a month. Yeah, <laughs> three thirteen packets of ramen a month. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, and there's a number of ways to work with us privately. To do that, you would go to we're talking shift podcast dot com, and we're all over the internet, all over social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at we're talking shift. All right, podcast. podcast. That's right. So. Thank you for listening. We love you. And uh, hey, go out and make some shift happen. You too, Gary B. The preceding podcast was a TJ DeSantis production. Comments, questions, and inquiries can be directed to DeSantisProd at gmail.com.